Hey, praise the Lord. Welcome to my living room once again. This is Brother Clinton, to those of you who are in Christ Jesus. And if you're not yet in Christ Jesus, my name is Clinton. I welcome you to my living room. I welcome you to my channel, to my videos. I am a man who is barely a Christian. I don't belong to any religious organization. I believe the Bible. This is my authorized King James Version of the Holy Bible. If you speak English, that is the Word of God. And I'd like to address something today that, that I've been asked many times, and that is that people ask me, how can you say that a Trinitarian is not a Christian. And, and I have said that many times, and I will continue to say it, because I am a Christian, I am a believer in the doctrine of Christ as it is set forth in the Holy Scriptures. It is written, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. 1 Peter 4, 11. So for that reason, when I speak, I speak as the oracles of God, and I don't entertain doctrines that find it necessary to use words and phrases that are not in the scripture in order to make that doctrine known. So how can I say that a Trinitarian is not a Christian? Well, let me explain to you first what the Bible says about what a Christian is. A Christian is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. A Christian is, number one, a person who believes that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. The Bible says, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and already is it in the world. What John was saying there, and that's in 1 John chapter 4, in the first couple verses, uh, I believe verses 2 and 3, what John was saying there is that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That's something that Christians know and understand. When, when a Christian says that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he's not saying... The God the Son has come in the flesh, or that the Son of God has come in the flesh. And let me explain those things to you. First of all, a Christian is not believing that God the Son has come in the flesh because there is no God the Son. There's no such person. There's no such God anywhere in the Bible. God the Son is a Roman Catholic deity that doesn't exist, and it is found nowhere in the Scripture. The Son of God is the Son of God. Just like you, if you're a man, you're the son of your father and your mother. If you're a man, you were begotten of a man and a woman. You were born, you grew up in the world, and you're sitting wherever you are watching this video. The Son of God is the Son of God. That's what he is. He's not another God. He's not God the Son. He's not the second person of a trinity. He is the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The reason he's called Jesus Christ is because he inherited his name from his Father. For by inheritance hath he obtained a more excellent name than the angels. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. And Jesus also said to the Pharisees, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. John 5.43, I believe that is. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is called by his Father's name, which tells us that the name of his Father is Jesus Christ. Okay? that's It's obvious. That's what his Father's name is. So when we say Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, we're not talking about the Son of God has come in the flesh. That doesn't make any sense. The Son of God already is flesh. He can't come in the flesh. The only one who can come in the flesh is someone who is not flesh already, and that is God, the Father. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, John 4, 24. God the Father, his name is Jesus Christ. His name has always been Jesus Christ, and it was revealed as such when he came in the flesh. And this is why in the second chapter of John, the scripture says, when Jesus was at the feast doing many miracles, that the people believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Okay, because the name Jesus Christ means Jehovah the Savior, which has come to save us. That's what Jesus Christ means. And his name has always been Jesus Christ. And that's why his son's name is Jesus Christ, because he got his name by inheritance. So when John says, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, what he is proclaiming is that those of us who are Christians, we know that God was manifest in the flesh. The Almighty God, whose name is Jesus Christ, whose name has been Jesus Christ since before time ever existed, and will always be Jesus Christ, because he is Jehovah the Savior who has come in the flesh. This is what we mean. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Well, this is what a Christian believes and professes. This is what a person confesses who has the Spirit of God in him, that Jesus Christ, the Almighty God, God the Father, is come in the flesh. Trinitarians do not believe that. Trinitarians believe that 
And when they say Jesus Christ, they're talking about someone who is called God the Son, who is not the fullness of the Godhead bodily, but one-third of the Godhead, or one-third of the Trinity, which they call the second person of the Trinity, which is all made-up nonsense that has nothing to do with the Bible. It's not in the Scripture anywhere. There's no second person. There are no persons of the Trinity. <clears throat> there are no persons in the Godhead. Godhead is a singular noun, which means the deity, and it refers to God the Father. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2.9 tells us that in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, dwells God the Father in a human body. Praise the Lord. So it's, it's just that simple. Trinitarians have a different Jesus than Christians do. They call their Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ, just like Mormons do and just like Jehovah's Witnesses do. But Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses also have different Jesuses. So it's very deceptive. The Trinitarian Jesus, Jesus to a Trinitarian, is God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. Okay, when, when Trinitarians say Jesus, they're not talking about God the Father. They're only talking about a, a, a person or a God called God the Son, which is the second person of the Trinity. For that reason, Trinitarians have a different Jesus than Christians. And for that, for that reason, Trinitarians exclude themselves from those people that John was talking about when he said, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And Trinitarians put themselves in that category of Antichrist. As John said, every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, but this is that spirit of Antichrist. Because Trinitarians do not know and confess that the Almighty God is named Jesus Christ, and that he came in the flesh, and that the Son of God is in man in whom God the Father was manifested and revealed. They believe, Trinitarians believe, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is another God called God the Son, and that he is a deity in himself, apart from God the Father, which is the only true God. That's error. That's a very important error. And it might seem subtle, or like I'm picking at straws or splitting hairs to you, but it's really not. It's very important, because he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. But whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. This is what the apostle said. The same apostle that said, God is love, also said, he that abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. So I don't care how often you go to church, I don't care how often you read your Bible, I don't care if you're a pastor, I don't care if you have a degree from a seminary. In fact, a degree from a seminary pretty much shows me that you don't know God. I don't care what you tell me, if you are not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, the Bible tells me that you do not have God. Okay, that is number one. Um, a Trinitarian has a different Jesus. So Trinitarians and Christians are, are barely divided. There's a wall of separation right there. Number two, if you're a Trinitarian, I know of a truth that you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, Brother Clinton, how can you know that? Who do you think you are? Well, I'm not saying that I'm any great thing. I'm just saying that the scripture reveals plainly that if you are a Trinitarian and you believe in the Trinity, that you cannot possibly have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ because nobody can obey the gospel of Jesus Christ while believing in Trinitarian doctrine. And let me explain to you why. For several reasons. If you're a Trinitarian, you believe that God is three persons. And you believe that those three persons are called God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, God the Father is God. God the Son is nobody. God the Holy Spirit is nobody. These gods are not in the Bible. They're Roman Catholic gods that are made up. Okay? There's no such God as God the Son. There's no such God as God the Holy Spirit. There's no Trinity. But because you believe that God is a Trinity, and you believe in these three gods, and you, you're going to say to me, well, I don't believe in three gods. I only believe in one God. Well, when you say to me, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, you have just mentioned three gods. Okay? You can argue about it all you want, and you can say you don't believe in three gods, but when you mention three gods, and then you tell me you don't believe in three gods, that's a contradiction in terms. So which one is true? So when you mention to me God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you believe that these are three different gods, three different entities, and that they're all separate persons one from another, and therefore you believe that when Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, that he was t somehow speaking about a different baptism than the ones that his apostles, whom he was instructing at that time, performed. Because his apostles went out and they baptized people in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you're a Trinitarian, you believe that there are two different ways to baptize people, 
And when you go to your church with other Trinitarians, you put people in the water and you say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And you jump them in the water. Or you say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, which is not in the scripture anywhere. But most likely you baptize them by repeating the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and then you dump them in the water. Okay, well, number one, you're in error because you said that you were going to baptize someone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and you did not, because you did not call upon any name at all. All you did is repeat Jesus' words. You didn't obey them, because Jesus commanded to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Okay, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not names. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. That's the name. That's why his apostles went, went forth and they preached Jesus Christ and they baptized people in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Okay, and that leads me to my second point, why Trinitarians are not Christians. Not only do you baptize without the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, as Jesus commanded, but you also teach people in your churches that baptism is not for the remission of sins, that it doesn't save you, and that the people that you're baptizing were saved already by accepting Jesus Christ in, into their hearts or accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, which caused them to become born again, which is a lie. Okay, number one, nobody can cause themselves to become born again because this is a work of God, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, nor of blood, but of God. This is what the scripture says. Okay? No man can cause himself to become born again. You cannot do anything to make yourself born again. Number two, there's no such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior or accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. Jesus never mentioned that. His apostles never heard of it. And nobody ever preached that anywhere in the scripture. Nobody ever did it to become a Christian. There's no such thing. Okay, So in, in tr Trinitarian churches, you have a group of people who believe that God is a trinity, which is a lie. And you, you believe that uh, people are... You baptize people with no name, okay, which is error, and you baptize people by telling them that baptism has nothing to do with their salvation, that they were already saved by saying a prayer, which is a lie. So for those three reasons, I know of a truth and can say definitively that Trinitarians are not Christians because they have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. To obey the gospel of Jesus Christ is to do what the apostles said to do in order to be saved, which is to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you'll speak with other tongues and prophesy. That's how you become a Christian. And if you're a Trinitarian, if you come to me and you say, well, I believe that God is a Trinity, I already know of a truth that because of your confession that you believe that God is a Trinity, that you have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no way that you could have. Because there's no way that you can obey the gospel of Christ and believe that God is a trinity at the same time. And for that reason, I can say definitively, without reservation and with no apology, that Trinitarians are not Christians. The same way that I can say that a Mormon is not a Christian, or that a Jehovah's Witness is not a Christian, or that a Muslim is not a Christian. Okay, all those people say they believe in Jesus too. Muslims say they believe Jesus was a prophet. But they're talking about a different Jesus, not the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if they believed that the Lord Jesus Christ was a prophet, they would believe what he said, and they would know that he's God manifested in the flesh. Okay? Jehovah's Witnesses say that they believe in Jesus Christ, but the Jesus Christ that they're talking about is not the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible. He's another God that was created by Jehovah in the, myth, in the, mytholog uh, in the mythological doctrine of the Jehovah's Witnesses. The same thing with the Mormons, the LDS Church. They believe that God was once a man and became God, and that we're all men and we can become gods. And so that we can be Jesus Christ. So Mormons are not Christians either. And trying to explain that to one of them is difficult because they want to believe what they want to believe. Just like if you're a Trinitarian, you want to believe what you want to believe. But if you love the Word of God, you cannot deny that the things that I've spoken to you in this video are the truth. And so this is why I can say of a truth that a Trinitarian is not a Christian. If you're a Trinitarian, my friend, I love you and I'm here for you. And if you want to talk to me, and, uh, and, and ask me questions, I'll be happy to share with you the doctrine of Christ from the scripture. But you're not a Christian, my friend, if you're a Trinitarian. And I say that in love and in the truth. And I will stand before Jesus Christ and give account for every word that I've said in this video. And I'm not afraid to do that because all that I've spoken is the truth of his word. So as I said, I'm here for you. 
as it's written in the scripture, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. And so if you come to me with questions or, and, and you want to know the scripture, I'll give you the scripture. If you feel that I've erred in anything and you come to me with the scripture rightly divided, then I will receive that. But if you come to me with parables of eggs and water and ice and all the, the things of the rudiments of this world and not after Christ, as the scripture says, to try to teach me this Trinitarian doctrine, you're just going to meet with, with a wall of resistance because I'm a Christian. I'm not going to receive that. Okay? I don't care how many theologians or how many people you call church fathers agreed with you. I don't care what, what you can quote from letters that were supposedly from Irenaeus or other uh, supposed church fathers. I don't care about any of that. All I care about is what's written in the Word of God. Okay, And if one of your church fathers wrote something, if it doesn't agree with the scriptures that were written, by inspiration of God, by the apostles and prophets, then I reject that. So don't come to me offering those things to me as proof, because they're not proof. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness. And so if you come to me bringing your doctrine, and you have to use words and phrases and sources that are not in the scripture, then I'm not going to hear that. Plain and simple. If that makes you mad, I, I have no apology. That's between you and God. But I'm here for you if you need me. I intend to, to abide in and make available to you the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ until my last breath. That's what I'm here for. Peace to you.